What really matters is, despite all of the clever computer science that we have to enable the smooth experience that you just saw, it's really just about quick and easy access to important information. Now, another thing that we've redesigned uh, on Android, um, on, on Honeycomb, is the notification system. And as you'll see, notifications are completely non-intrusive. They don't get in your way, just like on phones. But now they contain more information. So in this particular case, my friend Anand uh, is I enemy, and you can see his picture in the notification. And you can ignore it, or you can uh, uh, action it if you want. Um, what, we've, what we've done is we've built, maybe I can tell him to stop. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've built some templates that actually allow developers to create these richer, more advanced kind of notifications. And I'll show you a few of those. Uh, probably my favorite example is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, there's a headphone notification at the bottom here. Uh, I, have, I was listening to some music before getting on stage. And while the music app is active in the background, I get this notification that if I click on, it will allow me to play pause or go to the next track, for example, like this. And I can just pause that. Now, if I tap on the notifications area anywhere here on the bottom right, um, I'll be able to dismiss um, some of these uh, notifications if I don't need it anymore. We call this a line item veto. And while I'm in the neighborhood, let me talk about the quick settings panel right here. This gives me quick access to important things uh, like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. Just right there in one place. So now I want to show you some of the new application patterns that we've created as part of the Honeycomb UI framework. But before I do that, let me just point out the fact that we've spent a significant amount of effort making sure that existing Android applications run really well on tablets. In fact, an app that's been designed with our recommended development guidelines is going to work without any modifications and run really well on Android. And I want to show you an example. In fact, one of my all-time favorite games, which is, of course, Fruit Ninja. So because I was playing this earlier, I'm going to see that it's actually showing up here in my recents by uh, touching the multitasking button. So I'm going to go into Fruit Ninja. And I'll play this for a little bit. Now, this is a completely unmodified version of Fruit Ninja. In fact, what's available in Android market today. Um, before, and it was built before Honeycomb even existed. Uh, and it works amazingly well. It even supports multi-fingered, multi-handed uh, gestures, if you want. You can probably also tell that I am <coughs> really good or getting really good with this. Uh, but I'll pause that for a second. Um, so it works really well, even though it was built before Honeycomb even existed, as I said. Now, of course, we want to encourage application developers to build tablet-optimized experiences for the applications. And to do that, we've added a lot of really cool new things to the Honeycomb application framework. One of these things is what we call an application fragment. And I want to show you what that is uh, inside of Gmail. So let me open Gmail over here. Uh, so we, we're in landscape mode. And in landscape mode, you're going to see two panes, the left folder view. Uh, and then my inbox on the right. Now, watch what happens when I uh, click on a message, when I tap on a message. You see that the leftmost pane slid out to make room for another pane, the message, uh, that then slides into the same place. And if I click on the inbox, you see that the, the side, the leftmost panel or pane slides back in. These panes are what we call application fragments. And a fragment is something that a developer can use to encapsulate specific application functionality and then reuse that throughout the application. So for example, if I flip this tablet into portrait mode, um, I may want, and probably will want, to recombine how these uh, fragments are laid out. And eventually, fragments are going to be useful so that you can have completely reusable functionality between the phone and the tablet version of your application. So that's coming uh, in the future. Uh, another really cool action uh, is being able to pick up and then drag uh, a message, for example, into a folder. And this is something that has been uh, built not as part of Gmail, but part of the application framework. Uh, we have an incredibly full-featured dragging manager uh, that uh, allows you to create 
uh, and manage uh, sort of these, these bragging interactions. There's a lot more coming there. And then one last thing that I wanted to show is across the top here is the application bar. The application bar is another application pattern that can be packaged into a fragment. And in this case, uh, it contains, it's showing global actions. So I, I have search, I have compose, and a few other things. But if I select a few messages, you'll see that that application bar now changes to contain actions that are specific to the selected items. In this case, archive, star, uh, label, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is another example of sort of really modular development that uh, we've built as part of the Honeycomb application framework. Go back to the home screen. Now I want to talk a little bit about performance. Needless to say, we've spent a tremendous amount of time really optimizing performance at every level on Honeycomb, especially for 2D and 3D graphics. So first, all of 2D drawing that developers have been doing with the existing uh, framework can now be hardware accelerated. And developers can actually do that literally by adding just one line of code to their existing application, and then they can, they, they can take advantage of hardware acceleration. We've also added a new animation framework to Honeycomb to enable developers to add transitions and overall polish uh, to their applications. And you've seen some of that stuff already uh, in the home screen. I want to show uh, in a really simple way how powerful this is. So I'm going to click on the top button here on the right. Um, that's going to take me into the uh, home screen customization UI. And then I'm going to tap on the home button on the bottom left. And then I'll do that in rapid sequence. And you can see how amazingly powerful this new animation framework is. Just incredibly fluid and smooth. We're also introducing a brand new graphics engine called RenderScript. RenderScript uh, is built for high performance interactive 3D graphics. And it enables some amazing new things, some of which I believe you've already seen. Let me show you one of the best examples of this, which is YouTube. So I'm going to go to YouTube here. And what you see is this insanely beautiful 3D video wall that I can use to browse videos on YouTube. And you can see how fluid and awesome it is to play with. This is built using RenderScript. I'll go into our Books app, and in the Books app, you'll see a 3D carousel of the books that I've purchased, uh, also built with RenderScript. And if I go into a book here, I've chosen uh, Unbroken, watch how incredibly smooth the turning, the page flipping animation is, even when you have pictures. It's just really beautiful. <coughs> this is all built using RenderScript technology as well. Um, just for fun, I want to show you just a few more examples of 3D applications that we can build or that can be built uh, on Honeycomb. Uh, we've spent as much time as we could optimizing performance at every level, even doing things like supporting multi, uh, multi-processor cores or multi-core processors uh, at the kernel level <coughs> to make sure that everything works super smoothly. So let me take Maps as an example. So I'll go into Maps here. And with the Z version of Maps, as some of you may know, uh, we were adding uh, dynamic rendering technology with three-dimensional vector graphics. And what that allows is for me to do manipulations of all sorts in a map. So I can zoom, I can do some rotations, for example. I can tilt the map. Uh, and if I, can, if I go close, I can even start to see some buildings. Uh, look how beautiful it is. So look at the Embarcadero. Just incredibly cool. Uh, I will also show our music application, uh, which is over here. And I'll go to, uh, I'll go over here. So look at this incredibly smooth uh, sort of carousel that allows me to browse through my albums. Uh, also built uh, using the, the 3D constructs that are part of the application framework. And one last and really fun example is Google Body, which is a new application that I've heard some call the Google Maps of human anatomy. Uh, and I can do here the you know, things that you would expect from, uh, from maps, like pan and zoom. I can also turn on layers. Uh, but in these cases, there are layers like muscles, or uh, maybe the circulatory system, or skeleton. Uh, and I can zoom in here. Uh, perhaps this is useful maybe to tell my doctor on the phone that I've broken my clavicle. Uh, or if my doctor tells me that uh, maybe I've pulled my infraspinatus, I can actually find out what that is.